brought through their intercession that spreading your love among our brothers and sisters, we may be your children both in name and in truth. For Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the Apocalypse. In my vision, I, John, saw a white cloud, and sitting on it one like a son of man, with a gold crown on his head, and a sharp sickle in his hand. Then another angel came out of the sanctuary, and shouted aloud to the one sitting on the cloud, Put your sickle in and reap harvest. Time has come, and the harvest of the earth is ripe. Then the one sitting on the cloud set his sickle to work on the earth, and the earth's harvest was reaped. Another angel, who also carried a sharp sickle, came out of the temple to heaven, and the angel in charge of the first left the altar and shouted aloud to the one with the sharp sickle, Put your sickle in and cut all the branches of the vine of the earth. All its grapes are ripe. So the angel set aside his sickle to work on the earth and harvested the whole vintage of the earth and put it into huge wine press, the wine press of God's anger. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response, the Lord comes to rule the earth altogether. The Lord comes to rule the earth. Proclaim to the nations God is king, the world he made firm in its place. He will judge the peoples in fairness. He will let the heavens rejoice. Our response, the Lord comes to rule the earth. Let the land and all it bears rejoice, all the trees of the wood shout for joy. At the presence of the Lord, for He comes, He comes to rule the earth. Our response, the Lord comes to rule the earth. Gospel acclamation. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Stand erect, hold your heads high, because your liberation is near at hand. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. <coughs> the Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When some were talking about the temple, remarking how it was adorned with fine stonework and votive offerings, Jesus said, All these things you are staring at now, the time will come when not a single stone will be left on another. Everything will be destroyed. And they put to him this question. Master, they said, when will this happen? Then, and what sign will there be that this is about to take place? Take care not to be deceived, he said. Because many will come using my name, saying, I am he, and the time is near at hand. Refuse to join them. And when you hear of wars and revolutions, do not be frightened. For this is something that must happen, but the end is not so soon. Then he said to them, Nation will fight against nation 
and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and plagues and famines here and there. There will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, we are in the last week of the liturgical year and this week continuously we are hearing similar readings, the vision of John. In today's first reading also he speaks about his vision where the Son of Man will come to judge, judge the people of all the nations at the end time. But in the Gospel reading Jesus says nobody knows about this end time except him. There will be many people coming and saying that it is, it is I who has been sent by God to give the sign or to give the message of the end time. But Jesus is telling us not to get deceived by these people. And he is also making a point not to be frightened when we see disaster, natural disaster, when we see earthquakes, when we see wars, when we see pandemics, when we see plagues. At the moment we are in the pandemic. And the question arises in our mind that the whole world is struggling with this pandemic for so long. It's been a year now that the whole world is struggling with this pandemic. Is this the end of time. But Jesus is saying no. All these things will happen but end is not so soon and nobody knows about this end. My dear brothers and sisters, very often we live in fear, in anxiety, in stress and we forget to live in present. We, we, we have anxiety of future when we think about future, what will happen and continuously this anxiety doesn't allow us to live in present time. My dear brothers and sisters, if you have watched Three Idiots movie, you will know the main character of this movie whose name is Rancho and his two friends, Farhan and Raju. Now this Farhan and Raju, they were continuously living with fear and anxiety of future, what will happen, whether I will pass, whether I will get the job in future. And they were cons consistently, they were standing last in the exam. Whereas this Rancho always stood first. And he, this main character, the main hero of this movie, he gives him this formula to say all is well. In whatever situations we are, you say all is well, not to have fear. And Jesus is making this point today in, in today's gospel. No, do not be afraid, do not be frightened, not to have fear with what is happening around us, not to be anxious, not to have this fear and stress, but to have faith in him. The point of not having fear is our faith in God, that He will take charge of everything. My dear brothers and sisters, very often the sequence of these different events, the disaster around us, the wars, the pandemic, the plagues, all these things, the, the frequency of these sometimes dull our vision about the second coming of Jesus. Dull our vision or dull our faith. Sometimes we are shaken in our faith. But Jesus is making a point here not to have any fear because he is there. And therefore this end of the liturgical year and the first Sunday of Advent speaks about that Jesus is there, heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of Jesus will not pass away. Nobody knows about the end time. It is Jesus 
who is truth, the way and the truth and life, he knows everything. What we need to have is our faith and our faith will save us. During this Eucharist, we pray that we may be strengthened in our faith in Jesus. Amen. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Receive, O Holy Father, the offerings we bring as we venerate the passion of the holy martyrs, so that amid the trials of this life we may always be found faithful and may offer ourselves to you an acceptable sacrifice to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father, most holy through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as a Saviour and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, When we eat this bread and break this cup, 
we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Oswald Gracious our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you through all the ages, we may merit to be co host to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. 
I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself only to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Living waters flow Oh 